Good has always clashed with evil. Throughout the centuries, armies have raged war against one another, but the fight between good and evil can also happen within a single individual, even a child. Nowadays, the forces of evil are simply called the Hand, while the good guys follow the path of the Kimmerger. The masters of Kimmerger can see the future and on some occasions bring back the dead. A legend speaks of a great warrior, a woman who can tip the balance between the forces of good and evil, and because of that, she is wanted by both sides. At a remote facility, Electra, a hired assassin and one of the best in her risky profession, secretly takes out, one by one, the armed men guarding a notorious boss named DeMarco. Electra moves like a shadow and kills her target with a single blow. In another location, Roshi, a master of the evil hand, seeks a treasure. He asks from his son, Kirigi, to be patient in the quest. In the meantime, Electra is visited by McCabe, her agent, who brings her money for her previous work. He offers her a new job with a lot of cash, and Electra accepts. The next day, Electra travels by boat to an island and recollects scenes of her life after her rebirth. She is seen cast out of the temple where she is trained in the ways of the Kimmerger by a blind master named Stick. Electra soon settles in a lofty house and prepares herself for the hit. She takes a dive into the sea and in a flashback scene, ends up in a pool where her father trains her to swim better. Returning to the house, Electra is alerted to the presence of a young girl named Abby sneaking around. She stops her and discovers that she is a petty thief, having stolen an invaluable necklace from her. In another flashback, Electra, as a child, sees a devil-like creature in her mother's bedroom and freaks out. Electra wakes up and works out in the middle of the night. In the morning, Abby's father, Mark, comes to apologize for his daughter breaking in the other day, but Electra is cold as ice towards him. Abby visits this time and offers Electra to come and eat with them on Christmas Day. Electra agrees, but only after taking into consideration Abby's observation and evasive skills. At Mark's house, Electra acquaints herself with Abby and her father. They all sit and enjoy the food, chatting idly. Electra feels a little jealous watching the nice family Abby has. She learns that Abby's mother has died in a car accident and reveals that her mother died as well when she was younger. Little Electra saw her mother dead in her bed and took her necklace, carrying it with her ever since. The next day, Electra receives a file with the potential targets. It turns out Mark and Abby are her targets, but Electra, already forming an attachment, can't bring herself to kill them. She tells her agent that she's out, and McCabe informs her that others will be sent to get the job done. Electra keeps an eye out and visits Mark while two ninjas approach the house, planning to kill them. Electra kills one with her sigh, who vanishes into a green smoke and talks with Mark about who he really is. Foreseeing the second ninja's moves, Electra fights with him and takes him out as well. She then leads Mark and Abby away from the house. In the meantime, Karigi barges in the Council of the Hand with a band of four of the most dangerous assassins accompanying him. Master Roshi assigns the mission of finding that unknown yet precious treasure to Karigi and his team. Electra seeks out her former master, Stick. She finds him in a billiard club and leaves Mark and Abby to his care. Stick, however, scolds Electra for being reckless and not tracing the reasons for her initial failure to carry out the work. Mark says that the Hand killed his wife because he refused to give them something. Electra walks out, and Abby asks for her help. Electra hesitates, but after seeing a spy eagle noticing them, she takes Mark and his daughter away to McCabe's house. Electra asks for his help, and her agent reluctantly agrees. Abby changes her hair and worries about her life. Mark warns her not to reveal who she really is. Abby hangs out with Electra doing yoga. Mark confines in Electra that he knew she was about to kill them and then kisses her. In the morning, McCabe shoots the eagle spy and Electra foresees Kurigi and the assassins coming there. McCabe stays behind, buying Electra and Mark enough time to flee through an underground tunnel. McCabe is cornered by the assassins and Kurigi extracts from him the whereabouts of Electra before decapitating him with his sword. Soon afterwards, the four assassins go on a hunt. Electra hides Mark and Abby and decides to take on the assassins on her own. 
She attacks a brawny man under the name of Stone, who has impenetrable skin and supernatural strength. She breaks one of her sigh on his back, and Stone hurls a log at her, causing a tree to fall down. Abby screams and gives away their position. Stone goes after them, but fails to notice in time the huge tree coming down on him. The tree crushes him into a glowing green puff. Mark and Abby run, and Electra tries to reach them. Another assassin comes in then and grabs Abby. The girl takes out a gold shining rope and knocks down the assassin with Mark killing him with a throwing knife. Electra looks in wonder at the little girl. She asks about her, but Typhoid, another assassin, sneaks up on Electra and kisses her, rendering her paralyzed and at the brink of death. Abby attacks Typhoid with her rope, but Kirigi steps in and smiles. It is revealed that the so-called treasure is Abby. Just when everything seems lost, a group of white ninjas descend from the trees. Stick is among them, and he confronts Kirigi, ultimately sending him away. Kirigi and his remaining assassins flee, and Stick takes Electra and the rest with him. Electra experiences another dream of her dead mother and the devil in her room. Abby is trained in martial arts, and Stick tells Electra that Abby has a gift that makes her special to both the forces of good and evil. Mark tried to hide Abby, but failed, and Stick put a test on Electra to see if she could kill Abby or spare her, judging by the purity of her heart. Abby comes clean at Electra and mocks her for her OCD counting her steps sometimes. Electra says that she is her superior, and the two of them fight. Electra wins and tells Abby that one day she is going to be better. That night, Electra makes a vision contact with Kirigi, offering him a deal, to fight her in a single duel and whoever wins gets to keep Abby. A meeting is soon arranged at a deserted mansion nearby. Electra walks to the mansion, which is actually the place where she grew up. She waits for Kirigi, but instead a group of black ninjas come. Electra blows them all up with a candle and a turned on stove before facing Kirigi. A blade duel begins. Electra learns that Kirigi was the assassin who killed her mother. Electra tries to anticipate Kirigi's moves, but fails. Abby intervenes, and Kirigi knocks Electra out. Abby attacks Kirigi and manages to hit him before Electra comes to and flees with her. The assassin named Tattoo, who has animals coming out of his body's tattoos, unleash a swarm of snakes against Electra and Abby. Electra is separated from Abby inside a hedge maze. The snakes corner Abby and cover her. Electra finds Tattoo and kills him, saving Abby from the snakes. Typhoid finds Abby and blows a kiss at her, causing her to collapse. Electra engages in combat with Kirigi, who overpowers her. Electra, however, manages to kill Kirigi, predicting his moves, and throwing a sigh through the maze kills Typhoid as well. Electra takes an unconscious Abby back to the mansion and succeeds to revive her, following the same technique Stick has used on her not a long time ago. A little while later, Abby thanks Electra for giving her life back, and no one is after her now. Electra says goodbye to Mark and Abby, and accepting the second chance in life she has been given, she walks away. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. I'll be back with another interesting movie recap. Until then, take care.